So, so uh, I'm, a, as, as just was said, I'm a, the senior scientist in uh, Koltai's lab in uh, Vulcani, and uh, Hinanit is abroad, and um, I will replace her. And everything that I will say already was published, so at the, at the bottom of each uh, um, slide you will see a reference, and you can just Google us, and, uh, and find it is very easy. So, uh, we all know uh, a lot about uh, cannabis. You probably heard, and you will hear more in the uh, couple two days. Um, but uh, what is known is that um, there is a lot of, let's say, rumors uh, about uh, cannabis. Um, uh, it is believed to have three different uh, uh, parents, like sativa, indica, ruderalis. Uh, we know we are using the inflorescence uh, for, uh, to achieve uh, the desired uh, effects. And in the uh, flowers, uh, the, the, the active compounds are preserved in a trichome. Uh, the trichome uh, has all the composition that we want, and we know how to open it, get, get the uh, ingredients into our body. Um, the current state is a lot about sativa, indica, about their effect. Some makes you um, uh, more easygoing, some makes you more sharp in the mind, some makes you, so the, the knowledge about the plant is very from, is coming from popular knowledge, uh, is coming from uh, what we know about THC and CBD, and we uh, um, use to um, characterize plants according to high content of THC versus high content of CBD, and the assumed uh, uh, properties of uh, each uh, strain. Uh, and this is how it is treated today. A lot of names, a lot of uh, uh, taphonomy, like if they have very wide leaves, if they have, so we are talking about something that is very uh, uh, coming from popular knowledge, and we are trying to do something like, and, and from that we are getting also all these ingredients, which you can buy in several countries, and uh, uh, this is, this is the problem that we are dealing with because the question is how we are getting from this very, very uh, uh, shallow uh, information and these kind of uh, um, products into medicalization. Because if we want to have something that is properly to be used as medicine, we have to know what is the content. Every single compound should be characterized. We have to know how much we have from each one. We have to know how much the body needs for each an, a, a, a illness. We must know when to take it. What are the uh, inter, uh, inter effects between drugs and, and what we are getting? So if you are taking the flower, if you are taking the whole ingredient without knowing exactly what's inside, it causes a lot of problem, problems in the in going to, medic, to, to medical properties. What we are trying to do is to go through this medicalization and help the health uh, ministry to go to, through this uh, process properly. Uh, what we are trying to do is to convert the knowledge from chewing gum and, and other, other products into really medicine and into knowing. Mo basically, now the state is that we want to know all we can know about the cannabinoids, but you know that we have more ingredients there. So basically what we have in uh, cannabis are not just the cannabinoids that we are all familiar with, THC, CBD. In the cannabinoids family, we have around 140. 165. Well, it depends who's counting. It depends. <laughs> Daddy Meiri and Paula Berman just published a paper a year ago about 141, and uh, uh, Hanus. Um, uh, the, uh, the former worker of Mishulam uh, published the one about 165. So it, it doesn't really matter because all of the, the different uh, compounds are uh, basically theoretical. Nobody really uh, took one and examined, but we know that we have a lot, okay? Let's, 
let's say that we have a lot of cannabinoids, and besides cannabinoids, we have other families of compounds. And if we want to go through to, 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 to have a medicine, we must know what we have there. We must characterize them, and we must understand the inter effects, the intercombination. So this is really a, a, the, the cannabinoids, and we all know how they are developing. And it's very important for the rest of my talk, so that's why I'm a, a little bit uh, uh, putting a, a light on it. So we have the, let's say, mother of all cannabinoids, and it's the CBG. It's a precursor CBGA, and from we, this one, uh, CBDA, THCA, and CBCA can be developed. And from then on, each one has a, a family of different uh, uh, compounds that are evolving from that. Um, so if we have CBGA in the plant, and I want to uh, stress that the plant mostly, mostly produces the acid form, which is the non-active one, okay? Um, so we have a, a CBDA, THCA, CBCA, which are pr produced by different uh, synthases. Uh, so from a CBGA, we are getting either THCA or CBDA or CBCA or a combination of all. Uh, and then we, from that, they are decarboxylated. This is why we have to smoke it or heat it when preparing cookies. We must heat it so it will be decarboxylated into its neutral form. So we have THC, CBD, CBC, and CBG. This is the regular uh, uh, degradation process that occurs also in the plant, but mostly after harvest. Uh, so besides the... Uh, phytocannabinoids, we have also terpenes. Terpenes are mostly what is a, um, you, I just want to say, you can have pictures, I don't mind, I just want you to remember that you can find everything that I say in our papers, it's very, very easy. Yes, yeah. So um, the terpenes are mostly for, uh, are, are known for their uh, taste, for their smell, but also they are starting to be believed that they are, they have some kind of a therapeutic uh, um, um, effect. Uh, it's very important to remember that those terpenes uh, are not unique. They have, we have no significant uh, uh, special uh, terpenes in uh, cannabis. Each one can be found in many different plants and uh, and uh, the, the amazing thing in cannabis is that you have hundreds of them, and this is really hundreds. It's more than 400 different. Uh, so if you think about it, 150 cannabinoids, 400 uh, terpenes, only them, we have more uh, compounds in the plant. So you have an endless combinatoric abil uh, abilities, so, and you have to decipher it from each variety. So we have also flavonoids and other ingredients that these have not even been started to be investigated. Um, so in the plant, as most of you know, uh, um, you can get as many flowers as you wish. We uh, used to design the, the flower to make it the, make the, fl the, the flowers the inflorescence bigger. And we have like four or five on a stock, and we wanted to see what's going on along the stock. And you can see from that, from a very, very basic uh, view, that actually the upper, the upper flowers contain much the same, the same composition of cannabinoids, but almost three times more than the lower ones. So, sorry? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't see it. It's in milligram per gram. I don't know. Here, milligram per gram. So um, uh, uh, you, you can see that uh, in the upper, in the upper uh, flower, you are getting much more, uh, much more uh, cannabinoids than the lower one. So if you are treating, for example, a patient with the flower, with the whole flower, what are you giving them? How much are you giving them? So today. The, the, the people that are selling the, the product are making some kind of homogenization to get to a, to a, constant, uh, to a constant level. But then this, this, for example, should be bared in mind. Another thing that you have to, to know that it doesn't, these differences is not 
uh, is not uh, related on the way you extract. No matter what, what uh, extraction uh, method you will use, you will always get in the upper ones higher amounts, okay? So basically what we would like to do is to explore the potential of cannabis to, to be used as a treatment, as a relief, not just to, uh, to make people suffer less, but also really to cure diseases. And for that, for this one, what we have to do is we have to, to, to know, to identify all the compounds, and then to be able to separate them, clean them, and then combine them back to see what combinations are best for a special treatment or for a special uh, illness. And this is exactly what we are doing. We are looking at the plant as a whole. We are taking parts of it and we are combining them. And when we, are when we find the, the, the suitable uh, combination, we are getting into it, we are exploring it. And then I will, I will show you, I will give you one example that really led to, uh, to a pharmaceutical uh, grade uh, um, potentially uh, medicine. So what we are talking about is colorectal cancer. We are uh, actually, we are talking about many different illnesses. I will show it only on one example, which is the colorectal cancer, CSC. And this is a very, very uh, known disease. Uh, almost 40% uh, uh, of all the people that die from cancer suffer from this type of cancer. It is, it's very, very hard to cure. and. Uh, um, uh, in these cases, like orphan diseases, in these cases, this is where we feel that cannabis can really be beneficial. So the, the research aim was to determine active compositions, okay, compositions. So we are not taking the whole plant and treating the cells, the cancerous cells, but we are taking parts of it and combining them. Um, so we are working both on cell lines and on biopsies that we are getting from Mehir uh, Hospital. Uh, they have a, a department uh, especially for uh, this type of uh, illnesses. And if this is an HPLC chromatogram of, uh, of the, can oh, you can see only cannabinoids here, right? We don't see in the HPLC, we don't see the terpenes. We see cannabinoids and we will t take two fractions. So we randomly cut the, 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 the extract and we collect in the, in the preparative HPSC, we collect fractions and we treat the cells with them. And when we treat the cells with them, we, we can see that if we treat only with one fraction, either F3 or F7, doesn't matter, um, it is active. But if you combine them together, a, the amounts that you have to use are reduced, and B, the uh, effect is much, much stronger, and, much, uh, and it comes, uh, the relief comes uh, much, uh, much faster. So what are there? So the next step would be to know what's in this uh, um, uh, composition, what's the composition of this fraction, right? I, co I just collected randomly. And I, I, I'm telling you, this is not just three and seven, right? In between, we have one, two, yeah, until 11. And we tried, and we saw that three and seven together combined are the best. So, and, and we always compare it to the whole plant. And it's much, much more active than the whole plant because we took some ingredients that might reduce the activity. And there are, in the 500 that we are dealing with, some are reducing activity. So. This is what the composition of the of the um, the mixed compounds. Okay, so we see that we have both um, cannabinoids, few cannabinoids in the given amounts and ratios, and we have also terpenes, mono and d-terpenes uh, that we uh, analyzed, of course, not by HPSC but GC. Uh, and and the next step would be to understand exactly the mechanism of how it works on the cells. So we are uh, treating the cells and we are stopping in each uh, time and we are analyzing and we can see that this, uh, this gap is exactly where we are starting to see that the cells are dying, the cells are affected. And, uh, and if we know the mechanisms, we can really go to drug. And we also saw that the combinations that we built are 
making completely different sets of genes into, active, into activation. So we have more than 2,000 new genes that are reacting, which they are not reacting to each, each a, a fraction and not to the whole plant. So this is a new understanding, a very, very deep understanding of the mechanism and of what's going on in the plant. Uh, and we are even taking it much further into understanding the CRC uh, mechanism and why we are not just seeing that we are uh, purifying the plant, we are not just combining it, we are not just killing the cells, now we are understanding the mechanisms in which it is uh, working and we can uh, also see that the P53, that it's really the desired mechanisms in all all uh, uh, medicines that are a uh, purpose to uh, cure CRC. This is exactly what we managed to uh, manipulate here. So basically, because we have a greenhouse, now that I know the combination, I can go back and grow the plants from scratch according to the composition that I'm looking for. So if I saw that I really, really want to change the the um, the chemical composition and the ratios between THC and CBG because I saw that high CBG is something that I would benefit from. I'm going back to the uh, greenhouse and after I will do that, I will go again to the chemical analysis and I will go again to the compositions and I will go again to this and I will uh, make, me, make myself more and more and more educated about what is really going on with this cannabis. So this is, again, a very, very uh, small example of what we did. Uh, we grew the, the cannabis, the same strain. We are not playing with the strains. Strains is no longer a, a word that uh, we, are, we care about because we can inbred, we can play with it, we can change it, we can take whatever we want from each one. So it doesn't matter what you grow. Um, so we took the same uh, uh, plant or the same strain that we used before and we grew it now under different uh, uh, light conditions. We grew it under lead and we vegetated under lead and we flowered it under lead and we changed the, the, the conditions and we saw that after, uh, under certain given uh, conditions, we can change it and as you can see, we can get up to twice the amount of CBGA than the original. So we can now have, in a certain day of flowering, there is, because we are giving it a problematic lighting, not the best lighting settings, but we are giving it, we are putting it into stress, and then it cannot go over the edge, the, the uh, kinetic uh, energy that it needs to produce THC or CBD from CBGA. So the CBGA is stuck and you are getting higher and higher in amounts until it really reaches the uh, energetic gap and it can uh, develop a, a THCA. So the first step that we saw, that is really we are producing, we are manipulating the plant to produce whatever we are uh, we want, we, are, we wish to get. So we have higher amounts of CBGA. This is the place where I stuck it, okay? I, I made it uh, stuck there. And then we tried it on different uh, cell lines. We saw that in cyclic AMP, the, really the high, amount, the high CBG amount uh, compared to THC is really the, the most uh, uh, active ones. But you can see that at the end of the process, at the harvest time, after the plant recovered and managed to produce THC, the, the, uh, final, uh, the final composition is very similar between the one that was grown under regular light and the one that was grown under not so uh, good light, uh, under lead light. It's, it's exactly the same at the end, the composition is the same, the amounts are, are similar, but the activity, the biological activity is not the same. So, the plant has a, we call it uh, as, as, a, as a joke, a memory effect, okay? It remembers what, what it uh, had. It's not really remembering, I will show you what happened. But uh, actually, if we are testing it on uh, XTT and on cell death, cell viability, you see, you see again, the ones that were uh, uh, initially in, uh, grown under lead light 
are the most active, be, although the composition at the end looks, from the, from the cannabinoids point of view, they look exactly the same. So it starts to make us think about other family members, and these are the terpenes, right? So probably if the cannabinoids are the same or very much uh, similar, uh, we must look for the answer in other uh, places in the cannabis, and this is maybe the terpenes. And really, in the paper you can see uh, that uh, we published a lot of things happened in the, in the terpenes. It is too complicated to understand. Some are not uh, there anymore. Some decompose. Some did not even start to uh, to to be produced. So it's a very complex word, and now we have to go again and do this uh, uh, play of, of taking uh, uh, the desired fractions, combining them, and playing with them till the end of days. So now we have, from the, this uh, uh, really wild world of, of sativa and indica, we are starting to get into the known compositions, trying them on bio, bioassays, uh, understanding the, the chemical composition and then understanding the uh, pharmaceutical pathway. And when, when we understand that, we have to take into, into consideration a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, questions that are completely from the pharmaceutical world, which are the toxicity and how it works together with other drugs and the way to deliver it, because there are many different ways, and of course, clinical trials, and to uh, determine the exact, the exact amounts that are uh, needed. But uh, overall, we have to go to the uh, regulatory landscape, and we have to uh, seek uh, this too, and we have ex the, it, to identify the exact therapeutic dose, doses uh, for the treatment. But in this, in the uh, CRC uh, uh, example that I gave you, we really have a, a pharmaceutical uh, product. We have uh, uh, a firm that uh, is uh, producing it at the moment. We are in the clinical uh, uh, trials uh, stage, but we have many more, uh, many more venues like that that we are uh, leading in the in the lab, uh, coming from the same the same uh, uh, way of thinking about the plant, not as a whole plant, but really getting into the uh, the details in order to break the, the, the secrecy behind it. So, and because the, the combinations of 500 is too much for me, uh, we are working on much less uh, compounds and uh, trying to see the interactions between less than 20, and this is doable. So this is really what we are doing. We are going from weed or from strains into molecular, into the molecular level and into the development of drugs. And we are looking for new uh, medical grade cannabis product, product. We are looking for the uh, uh, active compound ingredients and how to uh, combine them. And uh, I want to thank, first of all, Professor Henanit Koltaid that is leading the lab and uh, all the people from our lab, from Vulcanis Center. We are working together with the gene bank in order to get the pool of genes uh, if we want to come go back to seeds. And uh, we have uh, more than 80 um, different plants that are available for us, but in the coming year it will be a few hundreds. They are available for you too. You just have to apply. It's for free, and uh, whatever is released, uh, people can get. And with with all the knowledge that we are providing the gene bank, the chemistry, the cannabinoids, and the genes. Thank you very very much. So. Just before we take questions, you can see the power of research. Uh, many years these guys have all kind of been working on, on the cannabis plant, uh, very much ahead of the curve. So thank you for the research and educating us so we can do more with that. Now we have some questions, new people in the front. So um, a couple of weeks, maybe a month ago, there was something that came out that Israel had found a way that uh, some of the cannabinoids had, had turned cancer on itself. And then there was a lot of press around that. And I wonder if you could just make some comments about what that was and, and how you got there and, and how this all would apply to, to that whole story. Um, I, I, 
I wish to comment only on my work and not others. Uh, it's a little bit problematic for me. I didn't understand how you identify cannabis romen, CBC. Yeah. And does it in the HPLC? It we doesn't have a peak there. So we have, oh, here. The, the, the slide about the HPLC that shows that you can identify. Right. Right. So, okay, so you have to understand that the, the analytical part is more complex than what I showed, yes? Um, you can analyze, we are using analytical HPLC to analyze, and also UPC square, in, in order to um, analyze the compositions. But in order to collect, we are using a preparative HPLC, which is much less uh, uh, sensitive. So the uh, analysis is not based on preparative uh, HPLC. And what I showed is a, the preparative HPLC, just that you sh see what are the fractions that we collected. Yes, we can see CBC. Yes, also in the also in the GC and also in the HPS analytical and UPC square. Don't you love it when they gig out? Here's another question over here. Um, thank you very much for a nice talk. Um, when you said that you were applying extract on cells, what kind of extract? Ethanolic, chloroform, water, um, and do you have a control? Yes, of course, of course, of course. We have several controls, and we have, of course, and uh, what we are usually, routinely, we are applying the ethanolic uh, extraction up till now. Sometimes, if we are doing separations on column, then the extraction is exon, and of course, then the composition is completely different, and we make sure we are a, a completely um, avoiding the, the hexan and we have control of all the solvents that we used and we have also positive controls and we sometimes have doxo and sometimes we have the, the whole extract before we, co so the, the control is uh, designed based on the, the analytical question that we have. So we have at least, we have at least between three to four positive controls and some negative controls. Okay, thank you very much.